Hello, good evening, and welcome to Monkeys With Fire. How's everyone tonight? Hope you're all well. Hope you're enjoying your week. So then, we are going to be doing some character creation. We are exploring the Cypher system from Monty Cook Games and taking a look at the We Are All Mad Here supplement because we are going to be creating fairy tale characters. <laughs> I've been looking forward to doing this one for a while. I think some of you guys in the chat have been looking forward to it as well. So hopefully you have your character sheets at the ready. Ah, uh, Mystical, are you all set and ready to join us? Let's do this. Okay, let's bring you on in. Good evening. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Are you excited? <laughs> Just a little bit. No, I mean, you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's whatever. Yeah, whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> okay, well, we do have a, a little bit to go through. Good evening, Martin. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Are you joining in on tonight's character creation? We are exploring We Are All Mad Here, a supplement for the Cypher system. We're going to be making fairy tale characters. So uh, I guess what we'll do is we'll we'll jump to the table, we'll have a quick flick through the book just to give a, a very general overview, and then we'll dive on in because uh, there's quite a bit that we can work through on this, uh, such is the depth that the uh, cipher system goes to. So let's, uh, let's go and take a look. All right, so... Oh, goodness me, we, we have... People we need to block already, isn't there? Hit him with the sword, hit him with the sword. <laughs> no, thank you. Just give me a second. Chat, do you guys have ideas of what you want to create? I know I do. <laughs> or any fairy tales that you want to uh, dive into to pull your character from? Hey, you did it. Did it, yay. <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of the message, though. I think I know this one. Uh, we can't see it. Chat can't oh, yeah. see it. It's fine. All right, excellent. Yeah, it's gone. What yeah, as soon as you do that, it's deleted for chat. You can see it because of um, right. the owner of the stream and that. And any moderators would see it. Yes, that's a little bit frustrating. Uh, yes, because we've uh, the channel's typically been fine. We've never had to deal with just random spamming, uh, so it's quite unusual. We've uh, Matt. Martin, We've had it you, a couple times, but not we, usual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes, just just in the past the past year, it's been a that you know. But yeah. there we go. 
Uh, Martin, okay, so you're going to try and keep up. Uh, okay, uh, it, do you have printed out a character sheet? Uh, there should be a link on the uh, in the description. You can get it from there, or you can get it from the channel's Discord. But let's uh, let's take a look at the actual book. As you might expect, uh, we got beautiful artwork throughout the entire book. It's really, really lovely. And uh, of course, it's got to be, I suppose, very generalized uh, because, well, fairy tales, there are so many, uh, so many av available out there, so many different interpretations uh, of them. And well, I guess we'll, we'll delve into this a little bit as we go through. But that's what this book essentially does, is it just provides all the tools for you to be able to create fairy tale uh, characters and adventures uh, in unique worlds. And I suppose fairy tales are probably the most diverse style of storytelling <laughs> there is because yeah. anything goes doesn't it <laughs> there are yep. there are really no rules everything uh fits in, in this format it's quite amazing uh and you can have very whimsical fairy tales you can have very scary fairy tales you can have bright and colourful ones, you can have dark ones. Uh, yeah. Everything is uh, <laughs> is fair game in this, which is really, really great. So the book, this is, this works as, I say, a supplement to what is in the Cypher uh, core rule book, and that has maybe four or five pages worth on the fairy tale genre. So this is a huge uh, edition. It is an additional 222 pages. There's lots of stuff. There is a uh, fairy tale world setting called Heartwood that is at the back of the book, which does allow you to create specific characters for that. And there is a scenario for you to play. Uh, it does talk about I think particularly with the, the Heartwood uh, adventure, uh, there is a section about mental health in games and using this setting as a way to uh, sort of, you know, uh, face uh, some very sort of issues uh, and actually sort of discuss and talk about them, which is an interesting uh, angle on it. Uh, unique sp steps for creating these Heartwood characters. So there's, there's lots to be found in here. I've only just started to scratch the surface on it because there is so much. Uh, so I've been very much focused on looking at the actual uh, character creation part of it. There is a whole section here on beasts and beings, uh, things that may be unique to a fairy tale setting. Uh, we have... Just to give you some idea of the archetypes here, we've got animals, earth beings, fey beings, beings of the grave, uh, named characters such as Humpty Dumpty or the Snow White. We have royalty, <laughs> shapeshifters, spirit beings, tricksters, water beings, witches, world and weather beings. Uh, and of course... You know, there's a, there's a lot of names in here that you will recognize. Puss in Boots, The Cheshire Cat, uh, Snow White. So there's a, there is just so, so much. It's a great read. And I love the colors in this book too. Like it's just, it's perfect. It It, it is. There, uh, and uh, this is what I've really enjoyed. Uh, this is the second of the supplement books we've taken a look at. We looked at superheroes, didn't we, a couple of weeks ago? Mm -hmm. uh, I love how the books are themed. I love uh, all the graphic design that you can quite easily find what section you are in by the color of the actual outsides of the pages, which is really nice. 
every double page always seems to have a wonderful piece of artwork to enjoy. So, you know, oh, look at that. Is that, is that somebody's, uh, is that a mirror? Mirror, mirror. <laughs> uh, I guess this is quite timely with uh, Wish being in the cinema uh, and the movies at the moment. So that's, that's very true, yeah. Yeah, we seem to be doing quite well with our uh, timings on uh, looking at these books. So then, let's... Uh, Let's jump to the character creation. Now, I am going to be doing a lot of jumping from one book to another. Uh, so we're going to have creating the character there. So, Martin, you're saying you need to get the second edition of the Cypher System book. Well, this is, oh, gosh, the second edition. I'll be putting this on the table because it's, gosh, it's so heavy. Uh, <laughs> what we'll do, we'll just quickly jump to the back here. That, uh, that quote, mirror, mirror, is one everybody gets wrong. Oh, go on. It's not mirror, mirror on the wall. It's magic mirror on the uh, wall. Now, is, is, <laughs> is, is, is that the quote as in from the Disney depiction or is it from now, now who, who is credited for that is the, the actual fairy tale? the original quote. So who's the, the original quote? So is that is that the is Brothers Magic Grimm? Mirror. Is it Hans Christian Andersen? I believe it's the Brothers Grimm because I have a leather bound right. copy of it, and that's what ah. it says in that one. So <laughs> no, that's right. Okay. Three hundred two. Yes. Well, that that's the thing, isn't it? I guess that's the power of Disney that uh, a lot of people think <laughs> that you know <laughs> these were the originals, and of course, no. Let's go back to the source. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, in the Cypher System book, Chapter 20, Fairy Tales. Uh, and as you can see, there's a nice little call out for the supplement book here, which is what led me to them. Uh, but as you can see, there is only five pages. So five pages of information that, in essence, you could work with this and you could still create your fairy tale characters. It's just, it's a, an area that I could have so much more to talk about. As we say, 222 pages worth <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> so, uh, so it's well worth, if you like a particular genre, going to check out the supplement book that accompanies it. But we do need to have the character creation from the core book. That is the best place to start. So uh, let me just get to that. Here it is. Okay. Now, something that they suggest is, first of all, thinking what type of character do you want to play? Good evening, Roger. You here? Class has already started. <laughs> <laughs> so sit yourself down. Get your pens and paper out. We're just about to uh, to get going. So, first question: What type of character do you want to play as? Have you got an idea uh, yes. of the type? Okay, <laughs> come on and tell me all about your character. What type of character? Let's keep to the very top level to start off with. What type of character? Oh, okay. What is the what are the uh, their their version of it is ed is adept is what my Ah, okay, my right, right, okay. No, sorry. Let me re let, let me rephrase it. Uh, thinking from the perspective of a fairy tale. So, say for example, you want to be uh, the the, the witch. woodsman or a sea witch. There you go. Okay, no, sea witch. <laughs> right. So you're gonna you want to be a sea witch. Okay, fair enough. So you've possibly got an Ursula sort of a uh, character in the back of your mind, yeah. <laughs> Yes? Okay. Rogo. Maybe. <laughs> and out into the chat, what type of character, fairy tale character, do you feel like you want to go for? Uh, while you guys are typing in, I'm going to let you know what I've decided for. I want to go for... I was going to go for a princess, 
And then I thought, no, I'm just going to take that down a step. So I think that the appropriate phrase might be a maiden, uh, a daughter of a wealthy merchant or a wealthy noble, somebody like that. So, Cinderella. Is is that well? Well, it is Cinderella because doesn't she start off poor and with her sisters? Doesn't she? No, she does oh. not. Who's the one? Um, who's, the, who's the one who starts? Her father off poor? was a well. Her father, her father was a wealthy merchant. Her right. stepmother envied, uh, envied her, and couldn't look at her once her father was uh, had passed, and then makes her become their maid. But she was never poor. Ah, so it, so is is this the uh, the Disneyfication of the tale? Because I'm pretty. Uh, I, I always recall that, that in, basically she was the one who's sweeping up after the three uh, ugly she, sisters. She is, but that's because her stepmother made her their maid. Right. But her okay. her her father. So she it's she lives with her stepmother. Right. And the two stepsisters. Ah, okay. They're they're not it was never her mother, it was it was her stepmother, um, who married her father because he was rich. Right. So she she did come from a wealthy family, but her her stepmother uh envied her and put her into the position of maid, so that's why most people think she was poor, but she wasn't. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go down the, the route of that the family has got some wealth. Uh, so, you know, not to the to the princess and royalty level, but, you know, not, not too bad. The thing is, is, of course, there are certain uh, in fairy tale tropes, there'll be certain expectations uh, for this uh, young lady to uh, get married to an appropriate suitor. Uh but I think that she's got a, a bit of a rebellious streak in her. And much to the uh, chagrin of her parents, she basically tussles uh, with the locals and she gets into fights. She's quite rebellious. Uh, she's reasonably handy with a sword. So uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I will describe her story a little bit more as we, as we go along. But... Uh, Yes, I'm sort of going for that sort of rebellious maiden. That's what I'm going to uh, sort of class her as. What if, What are you going to go for, Roger? You're going to go for the woodsman Robin Hood style. All right, excellent. Okay, and... You're, suge you're suggesting Mulan? I've just described Mulan? Uh, uh, maybe. No, that's who, that's, that's who you described <laughs> Yeah, I uh, love it. No, I love it. It's not quite Mulan, but uh, but we'll see. We'll see if uh, if you pick up on it. Anyway, uh, Martin, you're going to go for a Robin Hood style of character. Is Robin Hood going to be human? Because of course, <laughs> you could have Robin Hood as a fox. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's totally up to you. All right, so we've kind of got an idea. So from that, it does suggest that. Uh, once you have an idea of the type of character, we then start to build that character up following the rules in the Cypher system. So, the first thing to do, and let's just go through this because I will be saying this a lot during tonight. So, the top line of a character is the character descriptor, the type and the focus, which is, I am, so we go, I am an adjective noun who verbs. We're going to be saying that a lot, aren't we? So, yes, I, we are. If I just give us some examples from the fairy tale book, because I found this very handy, uh, it basically gives some examples of iconic characters. So here we go: uh, Cinderella, Snow White, and Bo Peep could be an appealing speaker who masters the swarm. Uh, now. What's interesting is it does, of course, it does suggest that maybe you change some of these words so it's more fairy tale appropriate. So as opposed to the swarm, maybe you could say uh, your small friends or 
It could be, as opposed to a, an appealing speaker, it could be a princess. Yeah? Uh, so that's where I will be changing what my uh, type into the maiden. Because I think that probably fits it better, even though I know what my type's going to be game-wise. Uh, Martin, you talked about Robin Hood. So this could be a... Uh, beneficent archer, warrior, or outlaw who helps their friends, or could be defends the weak, or is wanted by the law. So there's a variety of different Robin Hood style of characters you can do, depending what type of flavor you want uh, for your character. Uh, now, I don't have an Ursula equivalent <laughs> but <laughs> but we'll we'll create one we'll create one all right so we basically have four types and this is where we we go through good evening Lorno. welcome we're just about to uh start creating our fairy tale characters so there are four types in the game we have the warrior we have the Adept, we have the Explorer, and finally we have the Speaker. So, so let me give you some examples of the type of characters that these types would fit into, and then we can work it out from there. So for a warrior, in a, in a fairy tale setting, you might actually be a warrior or a fighter or a swordsman, a knight, a barbarian, a soldier, a myrmidon, or a valkyrie. All right, so basically somebody who's very much into their combat, isn't it? The adept is somebody who might be a wizard or a mage, a sorcerer, a cleric, a druid, a seer or fey touched so i think you said you wanted to be uh, a witch a sea witch wasn't it so adept is yes. definitely your type the explorer could in the in, in in a fairy tale could be an actual explorer an adventurer a delver or a mystery seeker and the explorer uh, type kind of is the sort of the jack of all trades the rogue type of character isn't it in other uh, sort of fantasy settings. And then the speaker could be a bard or an emissary or a priest or an advocate. It's somebody, of course, whose talents are more focused in communication, uh, the, uh, talking more than anything else. So Robin Hood potentially would be... I'd say an explorer, would you agree? Or a warrior, depending how much you want to wait the combat. What do you think, Mystical? Um, I don't know, because... Yeah, I mean, they've because they've got uh, archer under warrior, but explorer also has outlaw. Yes, So ex ex how yes. do you want to define him comes down to it. Yeah, so... so Rogue is saying that he's going to go yeah, with choices. Explorer. Yes. Well, this is, and again, this is the beautiful thing. That's why there's actually quite a bit for us to go through because you can lean into different aspects. So I, let me just come up here. Let's hope it all works. Yep. There we go. I have the character sheet on here. So what I'm going to do is my type is going to be an Explorer. But I am going to rename the explorer as a, as a, as a maiden. So uh, explorer maiden. There we go. All right. So I guess for yourself, Mystical, you'll be adept slash slash witch. Yeah. Uh, it's just so that you're able. Uh, well, yeah. So just so I, because I, it's just under there, under adept, it's listed as, you know, king, queen, witch, wizard, chosen one, apprentice, magical being. Yeah. 
So yes, you, you could definitely be, as an adept, you, could, you can be a witch, can't you? For sure. Uh, Martin, you're going to go for the warrior. So you're, you're leaning more towards that side of the Robin Hood character. All right. Excellent. Right. So that's the first part. Now, what we need to do, <laughs> there's quite a bit to go Sarah through. Sarah wants us to create one for her. Oh, does she? And she's going to she's going to jump in as soon as she gets home. She's like, what? Just do what would Sarah do? Oh, goodness so we me. Need to come up with one for Sarah. Oh, you're going to have to deal with oh. Sarah's one. Then. <laughs> yes, I'm going to I'm going to have to come up with it. So Excellent. while while you're Excellent. having a quick qu great. quick think of that, let me help uh, Roger and Martin then. So Roger, well actually we'll do Martin first because he's got the warrior. Uh, so you are going to be a tier one warrior. So looking at the character sheet here, well, you just need to put a a one in your your tier. Oh, that came as an L. That's not an L. Want a one. Uh, what else do we need to do? So, your stats. So, in your might is going to be a 10, your speed is going to be a 10, and your intellect is going to be an 8. And quickly then, for Roger and for myself, I guess, Mystical, you've got all of your numbers, haven't you? Uh, for this anyway. So, Roger, you need to put in a 10 for your might, a 9 for speed, and a 9 for intellect. So I'm going to do exactly the same. So, 10 for might, 9 for speed. Oh, it didn't work out. It's going to be just easier doing it with a the keyboard. There we go. Okay. Now then, what you're able to do, Roger, is you're able to add an additional six points divided between those three stat pools, which is your might, your speed, and your intellect. For you, Martin, you do exactly the same. You've got an additional six points. So... What is kind of a handy way of doing this is uh, just putting a plus and then however many points you want to allocate to each. I thought that was quite a, I watching a video, I thought that was quite an interesting way of doing it so that you can actually see the progression. So plus two, and then plus two. It's so that you always uh, know where you started from. Because there are many other numbers that we will be adding to this. Mm -hmm. Now then. Um, and I hope you guys are just... If, if I'm going a little bit too fast, just let me know. and Because uh, there is a reasonable amount to go through. So we all start off as first tier. And what we have as a warrior, let's just see. So your effort is one. And for the explorer, your effort is one. So right at the top here, let's just add a one in for your effort. And I'm just going to put a zero in for my XP. Just so I, uh, oh. Eh. Oh, no, don't do that. There we go. Okay. Is there a limit to how many points in each one? No. Nope. No, I don't believe so. It says uh, divide amongst your stat pool however you wish. So you could effectively put all six into one of your skills if you wanted to do so. I've just been general and I've put them all on each. The good thing about it is by putting in as a plus, you can always go back and swap them around a little bit before you finalize and you'll know where things were weighted and in what point we were doing this. 
So, effort is one for the warrior, and effort is one for the explorer. Now here's where things go a little bit different. So the warrior, physical nature, you have a might edge of one, a speed edge of zero, or you have a might edge of zero and a speed edge of one. Either way, you have an intellect edge of zero. So basically, Martin, you can either put in an edge on your might or your speed, right? And it's but it's definitely a zero on your intellect. So you get to choose on the explorer, physical nature, might edge of one, speed edge of zero, intellect edge of zero. So there you go. That's nice and easy. So let's just come down here. We have a one. Oh, it always wants to do that. The one in there, the zero in there, and it's a zero in there. There we go. So you're going to go for speed, Martin. Okay, so if you've gone for your speed, then uh, it's a zero on your might and a zero on your intellect. Uh, your cipher use, you can have two ciphers, uh, as can you, Roger. So you need to go to the third page and uh, just put on in ciphers, but only a two. So where are you up to, Mystical? Have you been uh, I was, I'm doing Sarah's sheet. <laughs> oh well, well, okay. What tell us? Tell us what? Tell us what you've gone for. Oh, she's going to be a very with uh, that descends from nobility and uh, is very strong-willed. Okay, that sounds like Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Uh... How else do I want to describe her? Um, she's got quite the accent and lovely locks. Lovely locks, hey? Sarah would be the Mad Hatter, <laughs> says Roga. <laughs> Are you saying that while she's not here? <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so... We've both of got Warrior and Explorer have two ciphers. So starting weapons. So for the Warrior, you become practiced. So it's practiced. It must be the same as trained, isn't it? So... For your skills, Martin, you can put on in uh, practiced with light, medium, and heavy weapons. And then you would just tick under the trained for that. So you do have a starting skill there. As for Roga, you start with light and medium weapons, but you have an inability with heavy weapons. Okay, so if you uh, you can see what I'll be doing on this, so let's go on into our skills. Oh gosh, what am I doing? Oh yeah, light. No, come back. It's actually easier for me just writing it out. Light and medium <laughs> weapons and put an X in there. Uh, 
Okay, that's not going to work, so let's go there. Okay. And then what we're going to do... is we have heavy weapons, uh, we have an inability. Okay. So you're going to be the same rogue for your skills. Uh, Martin, you have you have no inability because as a warrior you are trained on all weapons. So yes, you're trained on those. Okay. So starting equipment for the warrior, appropriate clothing and two weapons of your choice. Plus one expensive item. Two moderately priced items and up to two, four inexpensive items. We'll, uh, we will sort that out if we have time at the end. Uh, it's a similar thing for the adept, uh, sorry, for the explorer. Appropriate clothing and a weapon of your choice, plus two expensive items, two moderately priced items, and up to four inexpensive. All right. So, this is going to be the interesting part is picking your other skills, your special abilities. This is how we're really going to start creating our character. So special abilities for the warrior. Choose four of the abilities listed below. You can't choose the same ability more than once unless its description says otherwise. Now, what we're going to do, M Martin, I'm going to go through these four I want you to make, make a note of the ones that you're interested in by the sound of them, and then we will delve on in and get the details on each of these. Uh, the Cypher System book has so many of these special abilities and talents and ciphers. It's a whole catalog full of them. So here we go. These are the ones you have options to. Uh, bash, Combat Prowess, Control the Field, Improved Edge, no need for weapons, overwatch, physical skills, practiced in armor, quick throw, swipe, and trained without armor. All right, so that's, that's quite a bit there. Now, interestingly, I'll just draw our attention to the uh, We Are All Mad Here book that... Uh, there is obviously all the skills listed, but it does actually pull out some of the skills that are uh, very appropriate for fairy tales. Uh, so in addition to the suggested skills in the rule book, useful skills for fairy tale gamers might include. So these are within this book. We've got baking, cobbling, curses, dancing, death, magic, playing an instrument, puzzles, riddles, sailing, sensing magic, singing. See, why didn't I think of that? Maybe I want my character to be able to sing. Maybe they just sing all the time. Uh, talking to animals, <laughs> talking nature, trickery, using magic and weather. Okay, so there's a whole variety of of skills that they're making unique to fairy tales, which is really cool. Uh, so remember, the only skills gained through a character type ability or, or in other rare instances allow you to become skilled with attacks or defense. Thus, all magic skills are non-combat skills. So these skills can be used in a number of different ways, depending on the setting. Setting in as talking animals that, that the player can't understand, the talking animal skill could help a PC communicate with them in other ways. So I think this is where, as this grammar said, is this where we would pick these skills up? Because these are we're still just building our character at this point, aren't we? Okay. 
I think Sarah's going to go with the talk with animals. Talk about, yes. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> Roga, here are your abilities. Again, you're going to be choosing four of these. So you have block, danger sense, decipher, endurance, find a way, feet, fleet of foot, improved edge, knowledge skills, muscles of iron, no need for weapons, physical skills, oh, practiced in armor, practiced with all weapons, surging confidence, and trained without armor. So you do actually have a few more. Now, let me just have a quick look, because I did work through this a little bit. Uh, what did I go for? So I went with practice with weapons, danger sense, improved edge, and no need for weapons. Those were my preferred. Uh, what's also a handy thing is uh, in the book is that it has the page number to reference all of these skills. So if you have the PDF, you can just click on it and it will instantly take you to the page which does have the information. So, let me just quickly... Hello, Sarah. Oh, is Sarah here? Let me just yes, quickly... she's in the chat. She goes, I'm here. Write these down. Uh, there we go. So I want to put on in... Uh, We've got the practice with all weapons. Oh no, that's no. It's got this is the next one too. And just want to double check. I'll choose for the abilities. So I'm going to be trained in that. There we go. Uh, I'm going to have danger sense. So what's, like I say, what's useful is if you put in your page numbers uh, so that you can quickly reference this. But we're not going to worry about that tonight. We're going to have improved edge. So I get to choose one of my edge stats that is zero and increase it to one. So... Do that in a second. And what did the house? No need for weapons. Because I saw her to being a bit of a, a brawler. Ooh. Okay. So my edge, I get to improve one of these. I'm going to do this one and make this a a plus one. There we go. Right. Martin, what uh, out of the, that list I quickly uh, reeled off? Don't forget to bring Sarah in. Sa Sarah can come on in whenever she wants. Or have I got to announce her? Oh. <laughs> what? Can you all hear me? Is she <laughs> silently <laughs> sitting there? <laughs> uh, hello, Sarah. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> Could you all not hear me? Uh, we can now. Yes, I, I think. We can now. Hear you hear you yeah, I was on and like Kobe was. We, was did you, yelling you, and stuff, and we you guys unmute. weren't acknowledging that you could hear it, so. No, 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 nope, no. couldn't hear him. Couldn't hear 
So there okay. you go. <laughs> so then, Martin, tell us which four attributes you were interested in in from the list that uh, we went through. Let's just go for the warrior. You had bash, combat prowess, control the field, improved edge, no need for weapons, overwatch, physical skills, practice in armor, quick throw, swipe, trained without armor. And uh, Roger, if you want to uh, let us know what you went for, you got block, danger sense, decipher, endurance, find the way, Fleet of foot, improved edge, knowledge skills, muscles of iron, no need for weapons, physical skills, practice in armor, practice with all weapons, surging confidence, and trained without armor. There's quite a few titles there. What we'll do is we'll uh, just go for the ones that you kind of think sound like what your character might want, and then we'll, we'll find out a little bit of info on them. I appreciate, of course, that uh, it's very handy having the book. <laughs> uh, you're just going for uh, a general feel. That's all we can really do, isn't it? Danger sense, fleet-footed, trained without armor and muscles. Okay, all right, so we've got something to go with. So let's go with Rogue, Rogue first. Danger sense, 124. Danger, danger, danger. Danger sense. One speed point, so your initiative task is eased. You pay the cost each time, the ability. So you could put danger sense in. It means that your initiative, you will have uh, a higher initiative. You'll get to go first when there is combat because, of course, your danger sense is tingling. That's a slightly different uh, IP there, but you get the general gist. Uh, but it does cost you one of your speed points out of your... Uh, your speed pool. So uh, if you like the tingle that the danger sense gives you, would you just be trying to find danger? Possibly so. Possibly okay. so. Just checking, just checking. <laughs> um, you're going to go fleet-footed. Let's have a look at that. That was 141. Good thing about these descriptions is they're pretty... Pretty on the nose as far as, okay, well, what's it actually mean? So, fleet, 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 fleet of foot. Cost you a speed point. You can move a short distance as part of another action. You can move a long distance as your entire action. Okay, so basically, you get to move a lot faster. All right, let's keep going while I can still see it. Uh, trained without armor. Trained without armor is 193. See, this is what the Cypher book is. It's full of all these skills so that you really can make the character you want. So trained without armor. You are trained in speed defense tasks when not wearing armor. Okay, so we have... The fact that you can have a skill, but if you are trained in it, then you get a bonus. And if you have, if you're specialized, you get an increased bonus. Uh, if you have, but you can possibly have an inability where you are not. So in other words, in this case, if you are, you are trained in speed defense tasks when not wearing armor. So it's a bonus for you to not have armor on. All right, and your last one was Muscles of Iron, wasn't it? Uh, 165. The bonus points for being a nudist. Got it. <laughs> I think you can still Boy, if you're clothes. a nudist, you get, boon you get bonus points for being a nudist, and you like to be around Angel because you like the tingling? Could be dangerous. Could be dangerous with those. It's a very together. dangerous combination. Absolutely. <laughs> And, and now he's going to have Could you imagine more. just a naked person running at you like, oh no, danger. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fairy tale world. <laughs> could, it, you, could, you, you could have uh, the Emperor's new armor. That'd be an interesting one. So here we go. Muscles of iron. For the next 10 minutes, all might-based actions other than attack rolls uh, that you are attempt are eased. 
If you already have visibility from another source, the effect of visibility lasts for one hour instead. So basically, it's going to make any test that requires your might to be easier because you have muscles of iron. Okay, Martin, you were going for... Let's find your ones. Uh, the extra edge, I know that once, so that's 151. So this allows you, where is it? Where's 151? Improved edge. Choose one of your edge stats that is zero and increase it to one. So that's definitely well worth going for. Uh, have you found your first edition book? I think you, Martin, I think you'll be, be able to find most of these in your first edition then. Uh, trained without armor and physical skills. So that's 193. Which I think we just read out for Roger, didn't we? Trained without armor. Yeah, trained without armor. So it improves your... Uh, trained. So when you are trained in speed defense tasks when not wearing armor. And... <laughs> You're wearing a fig leaf. Uh, I'm afraid the chat has gone up now and I can't see what your uh, what your other ones you went for. But I'm hoping, Martin, what? that... We see... Oh, are you on the YouTube chat? It's on the YouTube, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was trying to look in the chat for you. Never mind, I can't help you right there. Yeah. If you wanted to just put the ones in that I uh, haven't covered, Martin, we'll go and do that. As you can see, there is so many different skills that you can possibly put into your character, which is great. Uh, I, I did spend most of the weekend going through creating a, a character and just swapping and changing and seeing what would happen uh, because there is just so much detail. Uh, we are really going to just scratch the surface this evening and maybe uh, we'll lean into it being a little bit creative uh, with uh, our character as far as descriptions because we might not be able to go through all the stats and figures. Overwatch. So Overwatch, Overwatch, 168. Overwatch, where is it? Uh, costs you one intellect point. You use a ranged weapon to target a limited area, a doorway, a hallway, or eastern side of the clearing, and make an attack against the next viable target to enter the area. This works like a weight action. So you inflict one additional point of damage with the attack. So it costs you an intellect point, but you get to do one additional damage because you are in Overwatch. Um, so, so that's I a good a one for Robin Hood. I, I have a request. Go on. I need to ask you the ones for, for Warrior. For the Warrior? Is that what you... As in yeah. the, the selection? Uh, yeah, so I think so. I was just informed that I needed to pick one from that. Oh, right, okay. So, uh, Bash... Combat prowess, control the field, improve the improved edge, no need for weapons, overwatch, physical skills, practiced in armor, quick throw, swipe, and trained without armor. Well, yeah, I found out that I, I, I'm without armor, so picking armor is, is not good. Um, uh, yes, if you've got if you're trained without armor, then ideally, yes, you don't no, want wait, to be wearing. Well, a message that there's fairy tale ones too. You didn't read any fairy tale ones. Oh, okay, okay. Let's uh, let's do those. What? So, uh, okay. Well, here we go. <laughs> you can have baking, cobbling, curses, dancing. I'm not quite sure what the deaf one is. We'll have to have to look at that one. Deaf. And I can only pick one. Uh, I'm not quite sure where these particular ones come on in where we get to choose these skills because these are 
So as described in a cipher Miranda, rulebook, there is no de definitive list of skills. Characters uh, can choose to become skilled in anything they like, with the GM's permission. In addition to the suggested skills in the rulebook, useful skills for fairy tale games may include. So I think there's no reason why you can't swap out one of the four skills because of course it's giving you skills for a warrior but maybe this warrior diversified a little bit uh so here we go so we got I've, been, I've been informed that i can talk to animals so i think that's a good one so okay so playing an instrument puzzles riddles sailing oh, sensing puzzles. sensing magic singing talking to animals talking to nature uh trickery using magic and weather um, well, I've been informed that the character that's being made for me can already talk to animals, so we're good there. Yeah. But I definitely think puzzles would be something. Yes, so and sol baking. So solving of puzzles. And baking. And baking, okay. <laughs> you'll, you'll have to find out what type of character Manda is, has been making for you. Uh, but yes, maybe this character wants to bake, so that's fine. That's fine. All right. Um, I've been in informed that I'm a sassy archer who descends from nobility. Oh, okay. Well, you know, talking to animals is fine. I mean, again, because it's a fairy tale that you could ne you don't necessarily have to be human. You could you could be uh, an animal of some kind if you wanted to be. Okay, let's mo let's move on. So after we've we've worked out our type, which. Uh, Again, it does go into quite a lot of detail on that. So next, we need to determine... We're going to skip flavor because that doesn't quite work in a fairy tale setting. We go to our descriptor. And remember, what we're doing is, it's a sentence here, I am an adjective noun who verbs. Okay, and the... <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? <laughs> what? Monkey, imagine if you were a real person who just went up to somebody and said that sentence just like that. You... It's, I, I, can't, I can't quite hear you. Cause you I you're cr you're cracking up. The object is to say, <laughs> fill in the blanks for those types of words. Yes, I But know. just imagine <laughs> if you were that character and you went up to somebody and so enthusiastically said exactly what you said, how you said it. Yes. <laughs> that would be I, the I'd funniest be thing. I, I'm going to try and do that tomorrow in conversation, and we'll see what type of response I get. Please, please oh, repeat please yourself, because now I don't even remember what the options were. Okay, Just so here we go. Please repeat that statement again. So here, here, here we go. Your, so your descriptor, your descriptor defines your character. It flavors everything you do. The differences between a charming explorer and a vicious explorer are considerable. The descriptor changes the way those characters go about every action. Your descriptor places your character in the situation, the first adventure which starts the campaign, and helps provide motivation. It is the adjective of the sentence. I am an adjective, noun, who verbs. <laughs> so, 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 so. We have a whole variety of descriptors. I want a verb. I you're want a verb. I you're like going, a verb. You're going to have a verb. Don't worry. You will have a no, verb. No, I just want a verb. That's just, so, that's my character. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm verb. <laughs> so, I'm going to go through the list here. Oh, gosh. Here we go. Uh, where's, some, where's some descriptors? Okay. So, again, in the fairy tale book, the following descriptors are appropriate for fairy tale settings. Other descriptors from the rule cipher system rulebook may be appropriate, but require consulting your GM. 
So here we go. Uh, there are some new descriptors that are included. So we'll do the, the standard ones first. So again, as it says, this is what flavors your character. This is the type of person your Sorry. character is. Are you doing the adjectives first? Uh, no, I'm doing... I. Oh, yeah, sorry, the adjectives, yes, because it's the... It's, okay, I got a your... pen and paper for this one, Amanda. I'll write down my adjective. So it's the, okay. your, it's going to be your, the name of your character is a... And my noun who verbs. Is an adjective, noun, who verbs. So what, what, um, what type did you choose for Sarah's character, Amanda? She's an she's an archer, so warrior archer thing. So yeah, warrior archer, okay. So we know that you are an archer. So what type of archer are you, Sarah? Okay, and this is this this question, of course, is out to everybody else in the chat. <laughs> so here's the list: Are you appealing, beneficent, brash, calm, chaotic, charming, clever, craven, creative, dishonorable, doomed? Emphatic? Emph emphatic? Yeah, let's go with that one. Exiled, foolish, guarded, honorable, impulsive, inquisitive, intelligent, intuitive, jovial, kind, mad, mysterious. Oh, I've already got it. I've already got it. <laughs> Naive, perceptive, resilient, risk taking, skeptical, strong, strong willed, tongue tied. Vicious, virtuous, or weird? Oh, I'm for sure an appealing arrow hurler who verbs. Oh, an appeal. Okay, well, you're building your yours your sentence up, so you're an appealing arrow uh, warrior who verbs. Okay, no, that's hurler. Oh, I hurl. thought arrow hurler sounded more fun than just archer. Oh, okay. You, you, you're even changing up. Uh, there, there are a few additional fairy tale themed ones, which is bewitched, a changeling, fragmented, frumious. I don't. What, what does frumious mean? Haunted and lost. Uh, you you cannot verb in Twitch. It's against their terms of service. Indeed, that is very true. <laughs> wants to verb <laughs> so give, give you an idea All give right. you an idea i'm gonna pick i'm gonna show you what i went for <laughs> i'm sorry i know it oh my gosh every what, single what, time like you're at a new job or something and they're like tell me a little about yourself well i'm an adjective noun who verbs <laughs> 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 well, at, the ice break, at the meeting icebreaker where they want you to go around this table and say like one sentence about yourself oh please somebody when it gets to you be like i'm an adjective noun who verbs <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, 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 oh, but love it. most people would be looking at you quizzically going what on earth is she going on about and then there'd be one person who would just be giving you a knowing look and nodding their head and going <laughs> I know, I know you. I see you. Or they would just laugh hysterically. They would take that second and just ha like, have the job. Have the job. Okay. Well, no, so... this is once you already have the job. When you're in the icebreaker meeting, morning meeting, and they're like, let's all go around the table and say a sentence about ourselves. That way you already have the job. Sa save it for that. <laughs> so I am going for being a strong willed. Explorer Maiden. So strong-willed, this now gives uh, my character a whole load of additional things. So what do we have? Uh, so strong-willed, you're tough-minded, willful, and independent. No one can talk you into anything or change your mind when you don't want it changed. So we gain the following characteristics. Uh, this character is willful, plus four to your intellect pool. Okay, so we've got another, got another addition, there it is. So put in plus four, done. Uh, you are trained in resisting mental effects. So, another one. Resisting. 
mental. Uh oh, I might have just made a mistake. <laughs> it's because basically I'm very stubborn, isn't it? Just drink a huge glass of water. That might not have been smart. And what else do we have? Trained in tasks requiring incredible focus or concentration. Sounds like verbs to me. Well, these are all these are all <laughs> the bonuses my uh, my character has. But 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 let me just put this one in. So focus and concentration. And that's trained. I hope you guys are thinking about what type of descriptor you are going to be going for. But we do have an inability. So willful doesn't mean brilliant. Any task that involves figuring out puzzles or problems uh, or law is hindered. So basically, I think I've got a little bit of a, yeah, I've got a bit of an issue as far as concentrating on uh, on what, what I might consider to be uh, boring tasks. So... Puzzles. puzzles and law hindered. See, now I'm needed even more because I'm good at puzzles. Indeed, you see. And this is an inability. I think I'll just put in in the in the there we go. Okay. So we've got those in. So what about you guys? Uh, what are you? What did you say you were going to go for, Sarah? I'm an appealing arrow hurler who verbs. Uh, an appealing arrow hurler. Okay, so let's I go to ap appealing. <laughs> you got to go for appealing. That's fine. Let's find that. Appealing. I didn't know that we could we could pick two different ones, so I just went with appealing. No, appealing is fine. That's good. So you've got a plus two to your because you're charismatic because you're appealing. So you get plus two to your intellect pool. So, which is you good because you have a zero in it. Oh, good. I was about to say, you got that, Amanda? <laughs> well, well, she should have started off with some, with some numbers in there. Yeah, the, I'm, at, I'm at the edge, so that's that's fine. Oh, oh, oh. okay. Uh, remember, it, but it, it's it's plus two into the actual pool, not your edge. I know, but yeah. having the extra numbers helps, is what I'm, I'm saying. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Most definitely, yes. She have that. So, yeah. you, so, 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 Sarah is trained in pleasant social interactions, uh, resistant to charms. You're aware of how others can manipulate you, so you can resist charms. That's basically it. Those are your two things. So, trained in pleasant social interactions and resistant to charms. All right. Let's see what the guys in the chat have chosen. Martin, what have you gone for? Uh, and Roga, what did you go for? And uh, we'll go and find, and give you the description. Then you can. What did add you it. pick, Manda? For for mine, <laughs> she's clever. Clever. Oh, okay. So, what did clever do? Clever is. What is your noun? Uh, uh, are you I'm an adept. So. Clever. So here we go. Uh, but clever. If you want to come up with a, uh... You're smart. You've got plus two to your intellect pool. You're trained in all interactions involving lies or trickery. Trained in defense roles. Trained in all tasks involving identifying or assessing danger. But you do have an inability. You're never good at studying or retaining trivial knowledge. So any task involving law, knowledge, or understanding is hindered. Uh, you also get some additional equipment. You see through the schemes of others and occasionally convince them uh, to believe you. 
even when perhaps they should not. Thanks to your clever behavior, you have an additional expensive item. Oh, okay. Uh, Martin is going with as a changeling. Okay, let's find that. Uh, changeling, changeling, changeling. Right, I need to go and find that separately. Uh, 168. So over into this book, you see, there's, there's, there's a bit of a jumping from one book to another here. Uh, where's the change link? Trying to find artwood descriptors. That's bewitched. Changeling, here we go. So early on you discovered, or perhaps you knew all along, that you weren't really who everyone thought you were. Perhaps when you were still very young, the child whose name you have have now were stolen and you were put in their place so you are able oh gosh there's there's actually quite a lot here uh you get a plus four to your intellect pool your baby was stolen uh no you were basically put in the place of the a baby that was stolen oh yeah I was about to say, man, I didn't know you had a baby and it was stolen. <laughs> uh, skills. It's not me. I'm not the changeling. So you're, you're trained in deception. Uh, your fluid nature leaves you less resistant to physical threats. Your might defense tasks are hindered. Uh, fragile. When you fail a might defense roll to avoid damage, you take one extra point of damage. But then changeable, so it costs you two intellect points. When you fail at a task and try again using a different method, uh, you roll twice on the second attempt and use the higher result. So there's quite a lot of actual rules in here, which you would go through. But ultimately, you get a plus four on your intellect pool. All right, so that's what you want to add. Uh, Roger. What did you decide to go for? Which one, me? I'm just going to see what Roger. Oh, Roger! I was going to say, Roger. I was like, oh, I didn't know it was my. We'll see what he he decided for, and then we can do that. And then, hey, we're nearly close to uh getting to the end of this uh well we, we need to have our verb don't we is it our verb i think it is has Roga disappeared i don't so what did you went for you went for clever didn't you uh mystical yes i did yeah a clever witch I, while I'm waiting for Roger, I could give you my little story. Do you want me to give me a story? I, I wrote a whole story on, on my character. Let's see if, if, if this... Uh, I would have to... I'd have to give you her name, though. Can I give you her name? Have you, start, have, have you guys started thinking of names for your characters? You want to start having those happening in the back of your mind? So that's the final part of the puzzle. Once we know what uh, the type of person they are, or the, the, their sort of main characteristic, and what type, and then what their uh, final element is, then we give them the name. I think Rogue has disappeared, hasn't he? Let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on. We'll have to come, maybe have to come back for Rogue. Uh, okay, so we have then done our descriptors, so we have our focus, here we go. 
Focus is what makes a character unique. No two PCs in the group should have the same focus. Focus gives a character benefits when they create a character each time they ascend to the next tier. It is the verb of the sentence. I am an adjective noun who verbs. So there are hundreds of verbs here. Uh, as there are many in the fairy tale book. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go through these. Uh, these are the ones that the fairy tale book recommends. Uh, let's just bring that there so you can just kind of see. There's quite a few. So here we go. Oof. Okay. Abides in stone, absorbs energy, awakens dreams. Bears a halo of fire, blazes with radiance, brandishes an exotic shield, channels divine blessings, commands mental powers, conducts weird science, consorts with the dead, controls beasts, controls gravity, crafts illusions, crafts unique objects, dances with dark matter, defends the gate, defends the weak, descends from nobility, doesn't do much, emerged from the obelisk, employs magnetism, entertains, exists in two places at once, exists partially out of phase, explores dark places, fights dirty, fights with panache, focuses mind over matter, grows to towering heights, helps their friends, howls at the moon, hunts, infiltrates, is wanted by the law, keeps a magic ally, leads, learns quickly, lives Who in the wilderness. Out Who would say, oh, I keep a magic ally, by the way? Like, isn't that something you'd want to keep keep to yourself? <laughs> you, can, you can, you can sort of rephrase these, but this is the, the, the sort of generic gist of what your character does, yeah? So where was I? Leads, uh, learns quickly, lives in the wilderness, looks for trouble, masters defense, masters spells, masters the swarm, masters weaponry, meters out justice, moves like a cat, moves like the wind, murders, needs no weapon, <laughs> never say <laughs> die, like <a> cat. <laughs> <laughs> performs feats of strength, rages, rides the lightning, runs away, scavengers, Sees beyond, drugs. separates mind from body, shepherds the community, shepherds spirits, sheds the walls of the world, slays monsters, solves mysteries, speaks for the land, stands like a bastion, froze with deadly accuracy, travels through time, was foretold, wields two weapons at once, works for a living, works miracles, would rather be reading. And then there are some additional unique fairy tale ones. Befriends the black dog, curses the world, feigns no fear, lived among the fae, made a deal with death, or sheds their skin. So, that's quite a lot. Uh, to give you an idea what I went for, uh, I went for the Meters Out Justice. So we're just going to put that in. There we go. And to explain what that is... Uh, and this is where we just have, you can see there's a huge amount. Just look at all these pages we've got to go through. Uh, it's all in alphabetical order, which is very helpful. And I think it's on the next page. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is it? I just missed it. Oh no, these are... Am I going too far? 
Ah, okay. It's... Right, here we go, here we go. Because when you take you take on one of these foci, this focus, and then you get to have what is your first tier. So basically, taking the meters out justice, I have tier one, which means I can make a judgment and designation. So those are the two that I need to add. Uh, make a judgment. And designation. Okay. So, Martin. Ah, here we go. Martin's already... Who exists in two places at once. All right, excellent. Let's find that. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, I think that is... Or was it exists? Yeah, it was exists. There we go. Because it's all in alphabetical. There's partially out of phase. Here we go. So tier one, you have duplicate and share senses. Uh, one, three, two. Let's give you an idea what these do. Duplicate. So it costs you two might points. You can cause to duplicate yourself to appear at any point you can see within short range. The duplicate has no clothing or possessions when it appears. Hey, we do have a naked person running around in the game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're a level two Looking NPC. Looking for them danger tingles. Yeah. The duplicate remains until you dismiss it using an action or until it's killed. When the duplicate disappears, it leaves behind anything it was wearing or carrying. So oh, that's quite cool. So you can make yourself a duplicate before you get into danger. And then there's two of you. That's cool. Uh, what else have you got? Share senses. One, eight, two. Uh, share senses. While your duplicate created by the duplicate ability is in existence and within one mile, you know everything it experiences and can communicate with it te telepathically. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Uh, Sarah, wh which out of all of those focuses did you want to go for? I mean, I guess... The, that one was like the talking to the animals, right? Uh, duh, 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 duh. No, was it? No, it was. That was. No, no, no. Talking with animals was something different. Okay. Let me just make sure. Uh, you, you could have master, masters the swarm. So that word, if you went, you'd have to change. You know how you said you were appealing. I think mm -hmm. that that's... right. I think I'm appealing still. I mean, Manda, do you have any any ideas which one you think would go with this character I've somehow crudely created? Oh, no, I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure where you're going with this one. I like it though. Um. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm an appealing archer. An appealing archer. I mean, it, it depends how you want to do it. I mean, you could you could have controls beasts. Can I talk to animals? Well, well, no, you could have it as controls beasts. There you go. How about that? Then I talking to animals is one of my things. Yes, let's let's. So have yeah, a look. I'd say I control some beasts. Yeah, let's do that. Hang on, let's have a look. A look, see what you've got. Controls beasts. So here we go. You can have beast companion. Uh, page 112. Let's have a look. You've got a friend. You've got a friend. Uh, beast companion. So a level two creature of your size or smaller accompanies you and follows your instructions. So, Absolutely, 100%. So you can choose 
a a, a furry companion. Or I can have an appealing puppy. Case. Got it. Yes. <laughs> to which you you can converse with. All right. So there you go. So just add add that onto your character. Uh, give the give the uh, the the puppy a name, of course. Roger, are you are you back? We need to uh, decide what your descriptor was going to be. What was your adjective? And I think that pretty much gets us to the end. In a very basic way, there is still so much more to be done. Uh... Is it, you want to go for mysterious? Okay, all right. Let me just find the appropriate page. Mysterious, mysterious. There we go. The dark figure lurking silently in the corner. That's you. <laughs> so then, you gain, you're trained in all stealth tasks. You're trained in resisting interrogation or tricks. But you do have an inability. People never know where they stand with you. So any task involving getting people to believe or trust you is hindered. Okay. So you want to put yourself here. You are a mysterious. I think you went for explorer, didn't you? Explorer. Was it explorer woodsman? Or huntsman? There we go. Okay. Uh, from the list of... Focuses, which is the final part. Did you have a choice on that? I don't know if you caught the entire list or maybe part of it as I was going through. No, Amy, it's not your turn to pick something. Stop it. There's quite a, a selection. I guess, I mean, that's you didn't catch the list. All right, here we go. From the top, one more time. <laughs> okay, here we go. Abides in stone, absorbs energy, awakens dreams, bears a halo of fire, blazes with radiance, brandishes an exotic shield, channels divine blessings, commands mental powers, conducts weird science, consorts with the dead, controls beasts, controls gravity, crafts illusions, crafts unique objects, dances with dark matter, defends the gate, defends the weak, descends from nobility, doesn't do much, emerged from the obelisk, employs magnetism, entertains, exists in two places at once, exists partially out of phase, explores dark places, fights dirty, fights with panache, focuses mind over matter, grows to towering heights, helps their friends, howls at the moon, hunts, infiltrates, is wanted by the law, keeps a magic ally, leads, learns quickly, lives in the wilderness, looks for trouble, masters defense, masters spells, masters the swarm, masters weaponry, meters out justice, moves like a cat, moves like the wind. I thought you said meat is out justice. Meat, meat is out of justice. I like, I, and I didn't understand. I was like, what do you mean meat is out justice? <laughs> <laughs> No, it me it me it means giving wrongdoers a good ass whooping. Uh which 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 would be murders. <laughs> Needs no weapon, never says die, performs feats of strength, rages, rides the lightning, runs away, scavenges, sees beyond, separates mind from body, shepherds the community, shepherds spirits, shreds the walls of the world. Slays monsters, solves mysteries, speaks for the land, stands like a bastion, froze with deadly accuracy, travels through time, was foretold, wields two weapons at once, works for a living, works miracles, would rather be reading. 
So, explores dark places or defends the weak? Well, I on. like the learn fast one. Pick one, pick one. And then that's what we'll go for. There's quite learns a few. Learns fast. Learns fast. No, you... but see, I feel Amanda would prefer to be reading. <laughs> I'm not quite not sure. Not with who I picked. Not, not with the character, yes. So dark places. No, I, thought, I just meant like... But me in general, yes. I like the learns quick, because mine does puzzles, so I think that they would learn quick. Oh, okay. Hang on, hang on. Dark places. Explores dark places. So you are the archetypal treasure hunter, scavenger, and finder of lost things. So you are a superb explorer and a superb infiltrator. So those are your two... Oh, sorry, sorry. You can only go one. Superb explorer, which is page 188. Quick scan at this. And there's lots of superbs. Where is it? Explorer, you are trained in searching, listening, climbing, balancing, and jumping tasks. Wow, that's, that's a whole lot. Okay. You can so, do a lot of verbing. There's a lot of verbing going on there. So anytime you have to search, listen, climb, balance, or jump, then you are trained. You have a bonus in that. Uh, what did you just say then, Sarah? You wanted to... Was it learning quickly? You're saying the quick learning or learns quick, quickly. Uh, learns quickly. I think it was learns quickly, wasn't it? There we go. Learns quickly. So you have enhanced intellect and there's your problem. So 135. Let's have a look at that. Uh, so enhanced intellect. Gain three points to your intellect pool. Okay, so that's a very practical bonus. And then there's your problem, 190. Uh, da, 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 da. There's your problem. You are trained in tasks related to figuring out how to solve problems with multiple solutions. Like the best way to pack a truck, calm an enraged customer, Give a cat a shot of insulin <laughs> or find a route through the city for maximum speed. So you're good at just solving problems. That's pretty good. Nice. All right. <laughs> so that pretty much does it. The only thing that's left is giving your character a name. And again, Merida. The, is that your name? Yeah. Okay. So you guys in the chat, let's uh, let's find out what your characters' names are. And in fact, maybe you should introduce your character as the full sentence. Yeah. I'm going to uh, put my character's name in and then we can all uh i'm a strong willed appealing archer who descends from nobility and does lots of verbs hi i'm narada <laughs> <laughs> well here we go uh my character is Isadora Thornbrook, who is a strong-willed maiden who meters out justice. That's who she is. Do you have your your sentence complete, Amanda? Yeah, she was a or she is a clever adept who rages. Oh, but what, what's her name? What's uh, her name? Her name is Vanessa. Vanessa. I'm sorry, did you say she's a clever addict? Sure, Sarah. No, <laughs> what? I'm genuinely trying to figure out the other word. What was it? Adept. So she, but, but, adept. But, but you can change okay. your adept to, to witch. Is she, is she going to be a sea witch? or? Yes, yeah, she's a sea witch. Yeah? 
Because that's that's the that's the what's the nice thing is that as much as we know in the game terms she's an adept, uh, but she's actually a sea witch. You see, we can give it the, the additional flavour. Uh, Roga, Dirk Treadwell is a mysterious huntsman that explores dark places. See, ah, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> If Amanda's character had it been addict, then I think Ride is the Lightning would have been the proper. <laughs> it's definitely. So, I thought about Ride the Lightning because given how Ursula is killed. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Like, True. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, mm. but did you did you appreciate since my character is essentially Merida that I gave it the name from Wish, which was Nerida? Merida. Yes. Yeah, but but mine is Nerida with an N. Nerida, okay. <laughs> so has, any, has anyone been able to work out the character that I've been trying to create that, uh, from a movie that I watched at the weekend? And Martin, if you have you got your sentence for your character? Can you say your sentence fully? Okay, so she is Isadora Thornbrook is a strong-willed maiden who meters out justice. Hmm, what branch of fairy tale was this movie from? Oh, I see, that's a, there's a bit of a twist in it. Uh, but Martin's got Wolfgang is a changeling warrior who exists in two places at once. Very good. That's Very really good. cool, but I feel like that would be a lot of... That would just be a lot to have to be in two places at once. Your brain then has to, like, do all of the things in both those places at the same time. Yes, I think it, I think it would it I don't know. It seems like a mind. lot. Because remember, the, the, the duplicate, you're able to hear and listen and see what the duplicate sees. So, you know, that's quite something. Uh, Lorna's suggesting Katniss Everdeen. No, 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 no. Not Katniss. Here we go. Elsa. It's not Elsa, but I guess this character from this film is possibly a uh, amalgamation of lots of character traits that you may have seen. Uh, but here we go. This is the, the Maleficent. Oh no, 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 no! Definitely not her. Definitely not her. So oh. here we go. I wrote, wrote a little, a little bit of text. I'm, I'm going to share it because I wrote it. <laughs> so here we go. Once upon a time in the kingdom of Eldorna, there lived a fair maiden named Isadora Thornbrook. She graced the world with her beauty and kindness. Daughter of a wealthy noble, her father sought to join their family through an arranged marriage. The chosen suitor, however, was a dark soul with a heart as black as the deepest night. With a spirit as wild and as untamed as the forest, Isadora refused to surrender her heart to such darkness. Enraged by her defiance, the suitor revealed his true nature, imprisoning Isadora within a lone tower and holding her family captive until she consented to the union. Unbeknownst to her cruel captor, Isadora harbored a secret strength. From a young age, she had honed her skills with a sword, much to the chagrin of her parents. In the cold shadows of her lofty prison, with a broken broom handle as a makeshift blade, Isadora bided her time watching and learning. With each passing night, her determination and prowess with the sword flourished. The moon, a faithful companion, witnessed the transformation of a captive maiden into a warrior. Swift as a forest breeze, she overcame the guards, seized a weapon, and danced through the shadows, fighting her way to freedom. So there you go. Any guesses? Hmm. I'm not, I can't think of anything that's recent. What about you, Amanda? What do you think? Well, when he was talking about the tower, I thought of Tangled. You see, this is but the thing. Like Rapunzel? This, this film yeah. takes elements from all sort of fairy tales and just wraps it into one. Uh, it's a, Enchanted! It, it, no. Shrek. 
Uh, well, that's it. You see, yes, actually, Princess Fiona is is pretty close yeah. to it, but her motivations, really? okay. but her motivations are actually quite different. The movie's called Princess, and it, it's a live action film, and it starts off with a young lady basically imprisoned at the top of the tower, uh, in a fantasy, you know, fairy tale ish kind of uh, world, and she has to fight her way down a tower. Um, so, yeah, that's what I, I went for. I went for this kick-ass princess. It's definitely worth watching. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's a good movie. It's it's quite, it's funny. Is it on it's a weird. streaming service? <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's on Disney. Okay. So, and it's just called Princess. It's called Princess. Yep. Well, right. well worth a watch. Uh, no, it's, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a, a, a Hollywood movie. Uh, it's been out for maybe a year, two years, something like that. Look, to all the American folk, hold on a moment, please. <laughs> right? I'll, I'll check this out for everyone. Let me fact check this. <laughs> Let me fact check it. However, I will warn everyone if it's if it's like the rated over mature or whatever, I can't check because I can't remember my password to fix that <laughs> setting. Um, so hold on a second, everyone. <laughs> I, it, 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 it's not it's not overly gory i don't believe and the reason that i'm i'm also checking is because i remember being in the land of ing and um netflix had different options there oh yes yes so oh. let's i'm just gonna i feel like if i just search princess it's gonna be like uh, princess movies hold on search Gotta, we gotta do this. We're, it's, this is a group effort now, everyone. There you go. You see, Rogue has already <laughs> found it. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, there's yeah. Princess Diaries. No, no, it's just called Princess. Uh, Rogue has found it. It's rated I, R, so there you go. You won't, you won't find it in that case. Oh my gosh, I need to figure out my password now, so that way I can watch Please. it. Okay. I'm like, I'll be able to find it unless it's this. And, and it's and this. And what did you say it was on? At uh, Disney. Uh... <laughs> but it, but it might it might not be on. Depends on on territories, doesn't it? Sometimes. No, because Amer America uh, Land should all be the, the same. Princess. Oh, it could be called. It could be called the Princess. Yeah. It's. Uh, I, it I think is not on Disney Plus at all for us uh, in America. Not? Nope. Right. That was on Hulu. Oh, okay. and that was very much rated R. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, like I say, it's live action, yep. and yes, she she meters out justice yeah. all the way through it. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. No, I saw that. That's why I was like, you guys are only making this thought, more intriguing <laughs> for me. You. Oh, you definitely need to watch it. It wasn't it's, bad, sir. It was pretty good. Have you seen it then? I don't Amanda? think it's on Hulu anymore, though. Right. Hmm. Oh, there you go. Rogue is saying it's on Prime. There you go. Everything's but is on it Prime. Free there we go. on Prime. There we Probably go. Not. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got me like searching through everything here. I'm like determined to find it. Because now I want to see a Fiona based live action. She doesn't. Go I mean, green. I realize she, it's not going to be she, Fiona, but yeah, she she doesn't turn green in it, you know. So you don't expect well, that. I mean, there's no dragon. Yeah. Uh there's no dragon having intercourse with a donkey. <laughs> Who wants to watch it then? <laughs> what? I was promised intercourse between a donkey <laughs> and a dragon. There you go. We there got you the go. princess bride. No, oh, that's oh, but that, that's a classic film. That's definitely worth a watch. That's yeah. definitely a good film. Anyway, <laughs> I guess we'll wrap things up there. Um, that that was fun. Uh, as you can tell, there is a lot of detail that you can go into uh creating your characters uh and making them very very unique uh as we found these these final sort of focuses here could turn we could all make the same character up to this point and then be totally different characters which uh 
uh, oh, obviously okay. uh, adds a lot to the game. Uh, what did you think, Manda? Do you, do you enjoy making a, a character in this setting? Yes, very much so. I want I I want to like present this to some of my my people who run games and be like, run run this for me. Do yes. this. <laughs> So what we'll do then is, because um, I, I think you might have to, uh, you might want to spend a little bit of time, it was, it was an area to make a little bit of backstory, uh, as I did. So if you wanted to do that, we'll start, post up our character sheets uh, on the Discord as we did last time. Uh, there's no immediate rush, so as and when, if you, you wanted to add a little bit more to it, then feel free. I'll probably put mine up on Friday because I need to do a little bit of tweaking still. Um, and yeah, let's let's just see. FYI, we have to rent it on Amazon Prime for anybody curious. There we go. Well, I think <laughs> yes, Rogue got a, a price there for it as well. So there you go. That, that could be your weekend watching. You could stay with uh, with the theme. Um, yeah, there we go. I think that's that, I think that's a lot of fun. Um, and I'm certainly looking forward to exploring one of the other uh, supplement books that we have for the Cypher system, but uh, where things will definitely take a very dark turn with that particular one. So, tomorrow evening, what do we have? Manda and I are going to be playing uh, Legends Untold. We are continuing with role playing, but this is role playing with as a card based game. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it is all the depth of a role playing game, but with the speed of playing a tabletop card game. So you can have full adventures with a full story with lots of characters. Uh, but only in little one hour sessions. So this is going to be uh, a an interesting uh, experience. Now I've spent a little bit of time getting to grips with it, so I'm going to act a little bit like a games master. And Manda, you're going to be the player. You're going to be the one who dictates what the characters do. With hopefully with the chat joining on in, maybe giving you some ideas to consider. Uh, let's see what your sort of exploration uh, of the illumination of deep sorrow uh, basically uh, unfolds. So that's tomorrow evening I from seven o'clock. I've been so excited for this. <laughs> it's gonna, it's good, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Uh, the game itself, it was crowdfunded. Uh, I think it's at the beginning part of this year, and they are expecting fulfillment April time next year. So this is kind of a bit of a preview, uh, and you'll probably have opportunity to put your order in prior to April if uh, it's a. Uh, appeals to you but it's definitely worth checking out if you like role-playing games this is one and also you can play it solo all right so it's one to uh to check out and uh consider for sure martin thank you uh so much for joining on in glad that you uh had fun as i say if you wanted to put your character with a little bit of a maybe a bit of backstory uh, on the discord uh the link for the discord channel is in the text go and uh, join us there there is a channel for our uh, role-playing games uh it'd be great to see uh what you come up with right then i think that uh that wraps things up then so thank you sarah thank you manda thanks all right thanks yeah. for letting me come on and cause a, cause a disturbance that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pleasure. Bye. Okay. Bye. -bye, bye, now. So. bye. 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 Now. Well, there we go then. So I'm hope you guys enjoyed that. I certainly did. That was a lot of fun. As I say we'll be doing uh, Legends Untold tomorrow so do come and join us from seven o'clock uh but until then bye for now <laughs>